Hello everyone, this is Lynn Palermo from the Armchair Genealogist and today I'm bringing you a 10 minute tip. Today we're going to take a look at how to create a customized research checklist in Evernote. Now I'm a big fan of Evernote. Um, I use it um, a lot for my family history writing projects as well as for research trips. Um, if you have uh, been to the Family History Writing Challenge and you've picked up my guidebook, then you know that I talk a lot about Evernote in there in conjunction with Scrivener. I use the two of them together for uh, to create a workflow for family history writing. Um, but I also uh, wrote a post a couple weeks ago about using Evernote in family history travel trips and basically you can change Evernote into a travel app. Um, it's pretty cool and um, I'll put a link to that post uh, if you happen to have missed it or interested in reading more about that. But today we're going to look at the checklist. Now first um, I want to draw your attention here. These are my, my file folders and my stacks and I have a stack here that I've created for the Phelan family. I'm getting ready to write a family history story about the Phelan family. And first, just to give you a little bit of how I use Evernote. I don't use Evernote to store my family history research. I use it as a project management system. So I keep my family history research basically in files on my hard drive. I keep it in ancestry.ca um, and I also keep it in my Roots Magic software program. So I have it in those three areas and try to sync them up on a semi-regular basis. But when I'm starting a project such as a writing project or I'm planning a research trip, then I like to create a, a project file in Evernote. So I've done that for the Phelan family because I'm, I am getting ready to write a story about them. So you'll see here um, I've created already a research checklist. I'm just going to open it here in a new window so you can see it a little bit larger. And what I love about making a research checklist in Evernote is that it's totally customizable. There's lots of checklists out on um, the internet that you can download for free. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of them are, are standard or they're um, maybe have a lot of things on them that I don't particularly need or they don't have things on them that I do need. So I like to make them customizable to each individual ancestor. So for instance, the one I have prepared here today is for John Phelan Jr. Now John Phelan Jr. Um, was born in Ireland and lived his entire life in Canada. So I can adapt this checklist and put on it what I specifically need um, based on where he lived and the time that he lived and what documents would be available. So you can see here we've got um, a variety of documents here, not a whole lot of documents. Unfortunately, John was Irish and um, came to Canada before 1830. So documents are very, very limited in that time frame. But we do have a few and the biggest and most important one is this uh, Phelan inquest down here. Um, this uh, John Phelan was supposedly murdered and there was an inquest into his death. And so I do have that inquest document. So that provides the, really the basis of my, my story and is, a, and is a key part of, of my information here. So you can see I can go in here, I've got this, and if I'm going now to an archives, which I plan to do, to do some social history research and maybe get maybe get a little more information on Jay, on Phelan if I happen to come across something. But um, if I maybe might be able to find him in a newspaper, well, I can check that off. And then I can put in here maybe the specifics to the document that I found. The other thing is if I'm, I'm heading out to the archives and I have this research checklist, but I want to take with me um, the inquest in this situation, uh, which details in it that I might want to reference, then I can attach that to the checklist. And quite simply, you can do that by clicking on the paper clip up here, and then it allows you to choose a file and download it from your computer and attach it to the checklist. Really easy to do. Um, you'll also see here you have uh, the the various uh, word processing apps available to you um, in order to um, customize this to various colors and sizes, ho however 
you would like to make it look for yourself. You can also share this checklist so you can email it to someone or to yourself and there's a link for it. Um, you can also share it via the social media outlets. So pretty easy to do but let's now let's create a checklist in Evernote. Let me show you how that works. So we'll just close this window Oh, before we move on to that, let me just show you one other thing. If I right click on here also on the checklist, I can also print it off for, for those of you who like to have that visual piece of paper with you when you go to the archives. Um, you can do that. You can edit it and you can also add a shortcut. And that's one thing I really like, particularly with the checklist, because when you add a shortcut, when you open up the Evernote app on your iPhone, the shortcuts are all there right at the top and you don't have to go looking for them. So it's right there. Uh, when you're when you're in the archives, so that's that's a nice convenient tool um, specifically for uh, to make a checklist a little easier. So let's click on new note and let's make a checklist. So first we're going to give our checklist a title. So I'm going to put in here Dennis Phelan, which is his brother, and let's put in here checklist. And quite simply, all you need to do is start adding the various um, things that you have um, or are looking for. And you can just, again, customize it the way you want. So for instance, for Dennis Phelan, um, he spent a good portion of his time in Canada but later, in his later years, he moved to Kansas. So I do know that there's several U.S. census that we find him on. So this is where it, it becomes apparent of how nice you can customize um, your, your checklist to the individual ancestor that you're researching. And then to create your check bubble, it's, you just click on this little little check mark here and that creates the bubble for you. Really easy to do. If you want to have it afterwards, you can have it after the, the item. So you can make it however you'd like to make it. You can put in your information here if you want. 1810 Kilkenny Ireland. Really easy if you want to have certain information to stand out, you can change the font colors very easily. That's It's that simple. That's how you make a customizable research checklist in Evernote. Now, imagine the possibilities. I'm using this, obviously, for, for family history research. I could use it to create a packing list to go to um, if I was traveling for some family history travel or any other kind of travel, or if I was going to a conference and I wanted to create a packing checklist, um, if I wanted to create reading lists, even if you want to make your grocery list, you can do it. Open it up on your app when you get to the grocery store and you have your own customizable grocery list. So checklists in Evernote, a great tool, and you can make them work for you um, using in and using them as a research checklist. So there we have it, the uh, customizable research checklist from Evernote. This has been Lynn Palermo from the Armchair Genealogist.